Family Worship Center. Service times in Family Worship Center we are first service 7 a.m. Second service 9:30 a.m. Do enjoy service with us. Hallelujah. We'll be bringing some announcements shortly as uh, to how we want you to drive into the compound and how you need to drive out and what you must do when you are here. Uh, we'll just keep fine-tuning our system and fine-tuning our security systems. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But per adventure, you came today to cause somebody pain. You came to look for a phone to take. You don't have our blessing. You don't have our blessing. So today, repent. Don't take any phone. Don't take anybody's anything. Don't enter anybody's car. Just go back home and ask God to help you. But we love you. And we want you to come back again and come back again and come back again. Some of us were thieves before. But God changed us. He will change you too. In Jesus' name. Luke chapter 15. It's going to be a lengthy reading. I'm reading the whole of Luke chapter 15. Luke 15, praise the Lord. The Bible says, until I come, give attention to reading. So reading is a blessing. Dharma, what is Dharma? Some of you don't even read at home. You will read today by all means. <laughs> praise the Lord. If I look chapter 15, say I'm there. Praise God. Here begins the reading of God's word. Then all the tax collectors, all of them, all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to hear, drew near to him to hear him. Wow. Sinners, tax collectors, drawing near to Jesus to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke a parable. He spoke this parable to them. So these parables that we are going to hear is a response to the complaint of the Pharisees and the scribes. Do you understand? So he spoke this parable to them saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. Until he finds it. If the Bible you are carrying this morning is your own, I want you to underline until he finds it. Until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully, underline light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until... She finds it on the line until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Somebody say, one sinner. Verse 11. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, Give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. Not many days after, the younger, the younger son gathered all together, 
journeyed to a far country and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he has spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land and he began to be in want. 15. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, as if he didn't hear the boy, bring out the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, this many years I have been serving you, I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, son, you are always with me. And all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad. For your brother was dead and is alive again. And was lost and is found. Luke 19.10 For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Father, in the name of Jesus, breathe upon your word. Breathe upon us. Cause our heart to receive. But Father, beyond receiving... Let your spirit put us on our feet to do that which we receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm following up from last Sunday. Last Sunday, our senior pastor came and recast the vision of FMI and FWC to us. I'm not dealing with FMI today. I'm coming to FWC. I want us to look at the vision of FWC again. And if you don't mind, can you help me put it there? Uh, because that is where I'm coming from today. The vision of Family Worship Center. Uh, if we have it, can we say it together? We don't have it yet. Can we do it together? Thank you. This is our vision. We exist to love God, to worship God, after we love him and worship him, then we demonstrate his love, his transforming love with excellence to the saved and the unsaved. So this is what we're about. This is our lifestyle. This is what God has called us to do. God called many churches to do many things, but this is what God has called us to do. And so we need to know all of this and how to do all of this. Praise the Lord. But today I want to focus on the unsaved man. We are demonstrating love to both the saved and the unsaved. But let me focus today on the unsaved 
man. How do we demonstrate love to the unsaved man? How do we do that? How do we do that? Because in doing that, we are fulfilling our vision. How do we do that? Where we rested, the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. But John 3.16 told us something. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him may not be lost. That is the new century version. That's not the new King James. I purposely looked for it. What we have is should not perish. But because of what I'm talking about, I look for this version. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that whoever, say whoever, believes in him may not be lost but have eternal life. And so we've read Luke and then I've told you our vision. So let me bring out some quick truths out of this passage that we have read. Number one, Jesus gave attention to all the tax collectors and all the sinners. He gave attention to all the tax collectors and all the sinners. We too, if we are going to be like Jesus, we must give attention to tax collectors and sinners. Do you know why they separated them? They are all sinners. But these guys believe that tax collectors are the baba of sinners. So they are the, the, the top echelon of sinners. So they separated it. If Jesus gave them attention, you and I should give them attention. We are not supposed to run away from sinners. We are to give them attention with one purpose in mind. And we'll talk about it. Jesus gave attention to tax collectors and sinners. So we should too. Jesus said there is rejoicing and celebration both on the earth and in heaven. Both on the earth and in heaven. When one sinner is saved, or when one sinner repents. Take note of that. Celebration, rejoicing. Jesus says, from what we have read, that when it comes to souls, one loss is too much loss. Did you get that? Jesus says from this parable, that when it comes to the souls of human beings, one loss is too much loss. You can't say, because I have ten, let one go. Because I have 100, one can go, I still have 99. No, 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 no. Jesus is saying to us, family worship center, hear carefully the word of Jesus, our master. One loss, too much loss. Too much loss. So one is as important as 99. One is as important as the 99. One is as important as the nine. One loss, too much. Tell your neighbor, one loss, too much. So Jesus is not giving room for any souls to be lost. What that means is every lost soul should be found. Jesus is also saying from this place that the finding of the lost is not gender restraint. Men should do it. Women should do it. The shepherd from what we saw is a man. The coin from what we saw is a woman. So every man should do this business. Every woman should do this business. Praise the Lord. Verse 5, he has found it. Verse 9, she has found it. Verse 32, was lost and is found. This brought me and has brought me now to the sermon, the topic. Go find the lost. Go find the lost. Tell your neighbor, go. Find the lost. In verse 5, he said, he has found it. In verse 9, she has found it. In verse 32, was lost and is found. Tell your neighbor again, say, go. Find the lost. So when we say the lost, who are we talking about? Who are the lost? Who is the lost? The lost as used in scripture, especially in context this morning and all over the Christian circle, is anyone, anyone, who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Anyone who does not have eternal life, you have not received Jesus Christ 
as your personal Lord and Savior. You have not accepted that you are a sinner and you need salvation. Anyone who has not done that is lost. Anybody. Anybody who is spiritually separated from God and unable to find their way back to God is considered lost. Anybody who is not in the fold, anybody who has not said, Jesus, I am a sinner, come into my life, forgive me all my sins, wash my sins away. Anyone who has not believed and confessed that Jesus is Lord is lost. Do we get that? And there are many lost people. There are a lot of lost people. A lot of lost people. Right now in this church, there are a lot of lost people. God drew my attention to a particular group of lost people yesterday. And these are people who were born or are born into Christian families. Your mom was going to church, your dad was going to church, and they gave birth to you, and automatically you began to go to church, and you've still been going to church, and all these 30-something years of your life, you've been going to church. But you have never for one day confessed Jesus as your Lord. You are lost. We confuse church attendance and salvation. Church attendance is different from salvation. So there are many lost people in church, many lost people in our families, many lost people in our offices, many lost people in our neighborhood with Christian names, Chukudi, all of those kinds of names, Sunday, Christopher, Israel. How can you be bearing Israel and be lost? But there are a lot of lost people. Anybody who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, confessed their sins, asked for forgiveness, is lost. Do we get that now? So our mandate, our vision says we must demonstrate God's love to the saved and the unsaved. And the way to demonstrate love to the unsaved, the priority way, is getting them saved. Listen carefully. It's good to give rice. It's good to give employment. It's good to do empowerment programs. It's good to do all kinds of things. But all of those things don't matter if first, if first they are not saved. So the most important way to demonstrate God's love to the unsaved that our vision compels us to do is to go find the lost. Tell your neighbor, go find the lost. Is this simple enough? We're talking about demonstrating love to the unsaved, which is our vision. And I said that the most important way, you give them rice is love. You give them money is love. You pay their school fees is love. You pay accommodation is love. But all of that has no eternal value if they are not saved. So the most important way to transfer or transform people with the love of Jesus is to get them saved. That is the most important way. So that is why we are going to find the lost. Because our vision, God's vision for us compels us to go find the lost. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Mark 16, 15 to 18. That's one reason. What other reasons do we have? We are ambassadors of Christ. So we must accept responsibility. If you are a Christian, the day you got born again, you got an appointment with it. You became an ambassador of Christ. If you are not finding the lost, you are an irresponsible ambassador. As strong as that. Write it in capital English in your, so that you can be seeing it. The day you got saved, you became an ambassador. If you are not going out to find the lost, you are an irresponsible ambassador. Why? Because he said God was in Christ reconciling men. And therefore, having thought that we also should partake in the ministry of reconciling because we have been made ambassadors. So if as an ambassador, all you are concerned about is yourself and not bothered about your responsibilities as an ambassador, you are an irresponsible ambassador. We don't have anybody in Family Worship Center like that. Say amen. Why are we following? Why are we going? Because from what we read, according to Jesus, one loss, too much loss. One loss, too much loss. Think, how many in your family are not saved? How many in your neighborhood are not saved? How many in your office are not saved? 
How many in your compound are not saved? It's a serious matter. It's a serious matter. Since we came to church, many have died already. Since we came and started second, first service, many have died. Where did they go? Is it possible that you could have saved them? Is it possible that you could have helped them in their final destination? God wants all men and every member of every family to be saved. One loss, too much loss. Why are we going after them? James 5, 19 to 20. The Message Bible reads like this. My dear friends, let me remove friends. My dear family worship center people, if you know people who have wandered from God's truth, don't write them off. Go after them. Get them back and you will have rescued gracious lives from destruction and prevented an epidemic of wandering away from God. Go after them. That was the problem Jesus had with the Pharisees and the scribes. They wrote off sinners. And so when Jesus was giving them attention, they started complaining. We must not be people who write off sinners. We must not be people who give up on sinners. We are commanded to go after them, to find them, to look for them. Why are we going after them? Because lost sheep cannot help themselves. Can I tell you the truth? No matter how educated a lost person is, degree in psychology, master's in psychology, PhD in psychology, they can't find their way back to God. A lost person has no capacity to return until a found person, a safe person, goes to find them. Did you hear what I'm saying? Your family members that are lost will not come until you go after them. Your colleagues in the office, your neighbors will not come until you go after them. This is what God has called us to do. Our vision says we, trans, we, 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 we demonstrate God's love to the saved and the unsaved. The most important way to demonstrate this God's love to the unsaved is to find them and get them saved. The lost person is helpless. The lost person is helpless. Some of them don't even know that they are lost. Some of them are highly foolish, deeply foolish, and some of them are in rebellion. Until we help them, they cannot. And that is why we go after them. So how do we go about finding them? The first thing to do is to begin to pray for the lost. That's the first thing to do. It's not carrying tracks and running out. No, you pray first. Let me ask us with a show of hand, if you don't mind. How many of us on our prayer items have praying for the lost? Too bad. Less than 10%. So we need to put that item. Before you talk about bread and butter and house, the first thing on your list should be, Father, let your kingdom come on the earth as it is in heaven. Save the unbelievers. So the first thing we do is to pray, starting today. I'm not saying pray for them for one hour, but every day we must pray for sinners to be saved. Every day. Because our vision compels us to go find the lost. What else do we do? We share the good news. We evangelize. We tell them about the love of Jesus. We tell them that sin has been paid for. And we tell them that we were also sinners. Jesus saved us. We tell them about ourselves, how Jesus saved us from sin. We tell them one-on-one -on -one, in the buses, in the gym, in the office, you tell them. Be bold to tell them. Be bold to tell them. You are helping them. You are giving them an advantage. You are fulfilling vision. We tell them. How else do we do it? We invite them. We invite them. Somebody will say, I don't know much to tell them much. It's okay. Tell them Jesus loves them and bring them to church. Bring them to care group. Bring them to prayer meeting. Bring them to anvil. Bring them to women of excellence meetings. Bring them to anchor meetings. We pray. We talk to them about the love of Christ. We share the gospel with them. Then we invite them. I was checking last week, and I realized that amongst all of us, it's only Pastor Sarah that was not invited. 
All of us, the rest of us were invited. I was checking. Pastor Yakubu was invited. Pastor Monica was invited. I was invited. The power of invitation. Come and see. That's all. Come and see. Come to my church. Come to my fellowship. Come to my care group. What are you doing? You are finding the lost. When they come, because you have put in an effort, the Holy Spirit blesses your effort. Somebody told me to come. 1996. And I came. I've been here. 20 something years, almost 30 now. <laughs> Invite them. Oh, let me stop and say this. In case you are here this morning, somebody invited you. There is a destiny here for you. There is a destiny here for you. It's not by mistake you are here on a day like this that I'm talking about this. I was invited. Pastor Yakubu was invited. Pastor Monica was invited. Pastor Kide was invited. Bola, Pastor Bola was invited. Brother Caleb was invited. Deacon was invited. Ambassador was invited. Uh, Professor Lambo was invited. Imagine if those guys didn't invite us. Imagine where I will be. I know where I'll be. Two places only. <laughs> Either in the grave or in a sick home somewhere. I, I, I am sure of that one. The way I was going, two destinations only, in the grave or sick somewhere. But somebody invited me. The highest form of the demonstration of God's love to the unsaved that I'm focusing on today is to get them saved by praying for them by sharing the gospel, the good news with them, by inviting them, and then by doing good works for them to see. Practical demonstration of love. It's after you have done this that you should give rice and give money and pay house rent. If you give house and give money and give house rent and they are not saved, one day they will still die. And the rice won't take them anywhere. And the car won't take them anywhere. So getting themselves is the most important. Praise the Lord. So we invite them. We reach out with good deeds. We serve in the community. We do good things for them to see. We live a life that is worthy of emulating. Why did Nicodemus come to Jesus? Jesus didn't go to him. Nicodemus came to Jesus. He said, we have watched you. We have looked at your life. What you didn't know is that since you appeared, we have been checking you out. You are a good man. We have concluded you are from God. How can I be saved? So, when you are talking to people about Jesus and your lifestyle is opposite, you are taken away from the potency of your witness. And so we do all of this and then we live right. We live right. Praise the Lord. I have Plenty people in church that I didn't say nothing to them. Plenty people in this church. I didn't say nothing to them. We started meeting in the gym. We started gisting. Some of them, I didn't even know how they found out my church and how they found out that I'm a pastor. It's powerful. So we speak, but we also act it out. After today, tomorrow, Monday, are you a different person? Glory to God. We continue. We persist and we follow up. Listen carefully. Most people will not say yes the first time. Most people will not say yes the first time. So don't get angry if they didn't show interest. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We persist and we follow up. We call again, we keep praying for them, and we call again, and we share again, and we love them, and we bless them, and we keep praying for them until the cloud is full. So what did I come to say this morning? I came to tell us that our vision compels us to demonstrate God's love to the saved and the unsaved. But focusing on the unsaved this morning, the highest form of the demonstration of love to the unsaved is to get them on again. So we go. Go requires effort. Go requires getting up. Go requires you changing location on a purpose with a purpose. 
we find, we will find carefully. The Bible says the woman lit the lamp. Take the word. We find carefully. The, the, the Bible says she swept. You are sweeping your neighborhood. You are sweeping your office. You are looking. Which one? You are looking. She swept. She carefully found. We are going to carefully look for them. Some of them are obvious to know, but some are not obvious. Some are hiding under good works, but they are lost. That is the way we demonstrate God's love to the unsaved. And in Family Worship Center, Pastor has told you, our care group system is our major medium for this demonstration. So if you bring them to church, it's still not enough. You must take them to the care group. And that brings me to you. You yourself must be, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But that brings me to you. You yourself, if you are under the sound of my voice this morning, you also must be in the care group. Let me tell you why you should be in the care group. There are some people who will come to a care group. They will not connect with the care group leader. They will not. No matter how anointed the care group leader is, they will not. But you coming to sit there, they will connect with you. So because of you, they will start coming. What have you done? You have found a lost person. God has used you. So all of us need to be in a care group so that when God brings the different kinds of people, if they don't connect with one person, at least they will connect with you. Do you get it now? So God wants you in the care group. It's our major platform for the demonstration of love in this church. So help me tell your neighbor, please repent. Be in a care group. God wants you there. You may not need the care group, but the care group needs you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that is our vision. But God also spoke to our own leader who also broke down certain things to make it easy for us. And so we came this year by the authority of the Holy Spirit and said, if you're a member of this church, last year you didn't do much. This year, go out and speak to six people. Six. We have 366, 65, 66 days in the whole year. Just six people about Christ. Make sure they receive Christ. Bring them to church or take them to the care group. Six. But those people who succeeded last year, to whom much is given, and wise people say those who do great work, more work is given to them. Twelve. Do we get that? That's one person per month. Is that too much? Not too much. Remember, there is joy and rejoicing and celebration in heaven. Will you want to be responsible for celebration in heaven? I want you to take that question seriously. Do you want to be responsible for celebration in heaven? All you have to do is to get the sinner to repent. Six, for those who didn't do anything last year. Twelve, for those who did six last year. And then you would have brought your own souls to Christ. What are you doing? You are demonstrating God's love to the unsaved, which is our vision. Tell your neighbor, go find the lost. As I conclude this morning, there are only two kinds of people in the world. Only two kinds of people. Every human being belongs to one of these two groups. The saved or the lost. That's all. The saved or the lost. The saved or the lost. Tell your neighbor, go find the lost. Only two categories of human beings on planet Earth. The saved or the lost. So this is the conclusion of the matter. When you die, you will not die rich or poor. You die saved or lost. When you die, you don't die educated or illiterate. You die saved or lost. When you die, you don't die famous or Nobody, you die saved or lost. Two categories only. On that day, when you cease breathing, nobody is going to talk about your educational status. Nobody is going to talk about your economic status. It's going to be, are you saved or are you lost? If you are saved, eternal rest. If you are not saved, eternal condemnation. That's it. Only two categories. 
not educated or uneducated. It is saved or lost. Can we bow our heads? Can we bow our heads? I want you to pray for yourself. The part that hit me is the irresponsible ambassador. I don't want to be called an irresponsible person. I don't want to be called an irresponsible person. I have received the ministry of reconciliation the day I got saved. So I'm compelled by my office to go find the lost. I want you to pray for yourself. I want you to pray for yourself. Check yourself first. Are you doing the work of an ambassador, properly ambassador of Christ? Are you reconciling men to God? Are you doing your duty as an ambassador? Are you doing your duty as an ambassador? Are you praying for the lost daily? Are you going out and speaking to the lost daily? Are you inviting the lost to fellowship so that they can hear the word of God and be saved? Are you showing good example that they can copy and say, what you have, I want it? Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Ask God to help you. He said, if we ask, we will receive. Ask God to help you. To make you a fruitful, responsible ambassador of Christ. In words, in thoughts, in action. A fruitful, worthy ambassador of Christ. That the responsibility of demonstrating love to the unsaved by finding the lost will be a priority responsibility for you. Ask God for the consciousness, the consciousness that wherever you are, whoever you are with, the first thing that comes to your mind is this person standing before me. Are they saved? Ask God to touch your lips. Ask God to touch your lips to fill you with wisdom that the unbeliever cannot gain say. In Jesus' name. You know, you are here this morning. I define the lost. I said, anyone who has not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, you are lost. And if anything happens, Nobody is going to check whether you are educated or uneducated. It's either you are lost or found. I also explained, I said, you may have been born into a godly family. Father and mother are Christians. But you have not personally confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This is a good day to do that. You want to confess Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. This is a good time to do that. I will lead you in praying. It's a simple prayer. It's a very, very simple prayer. That's number one. Number two, you say, okay, will Jesus accept somebody like me? I have committed too much sin. Hear me and hear me well. There is no sin you have committed that he did not make provision for. Your sin cannot be as much as the forgiveness that he has put aside for you. Number two, he is not angry with you. He wants you back home. Where we read says that the father of the prodigal son was waiting and looking out. Jesus this morning is waiting and looking out for you. While the son was coming near home, the son had not seen the father before the father saw the son and ran. If you get up to come to him this morning, he will run towards you. He will run towards you. He is not angry with you. The Bible says this boy wasted all his inheritance. But still, the love of the Father was waiting for him. Jesus is waiting for you this morning with a full heart of love. You are also here, you said, well, I used to have the joy of salvation. I'm no longer enjoying the joy of salvation, so I'm not even sure where I am. I'll pray with you. Same simple prayer. So you want me to pray with you? Please raise your hand wherever you are seated. Raise your hand wherever you are seated. Raise it properly. Raise it properly. Let me pray with you. It's a simple prayer. Today, something will change in your life. Your direction will change. Your direction will change. Your direction will change. Peace will come. Help 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 will come. He said, come to me if you have suffered and you are tired. 
Let me give you rest. Raise your hand, I'll pray for you so you can receive the help. Raise it properly. I want to see it properly. Praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you. I see that hand. I see that hand. Thank you. Just be bold about it because God is going to be bold about you from this day forward. He's going to be bold about you. Now, carefully, you also came to church. You say, my life is not joyful. I'm not happy. Something about my life is not satisfactory. He is the giver of life. He is the giver of life. He gives full, abundant life. You say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to enjoy abundant life. I am not seeing the results of my living. He is here for you. Let me see your hands too, so that I pray with you alongside you. Raise your hand. You say, I want abundant life in Christ. Abundant life in Christ. Now, if your hands are up, thank you very much. Can you stand? Can you stand boldly now? Stand boldly. Can you stand boldly? Thank you. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you upstairs. I see you downstairs. I need to say this for the last time before you start coming. He says for me to tell you that he loves you. He is not angry with you. Did you hear that? He says it doesn't matter what you have done. He loves you. He's not angry with you. He loves you. He's not angry with you. You want to join them, join them. Please, those of us standing, boldly come to the altar. Boldly come to the altar. Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves you. That I know. Yes. Jesus loves me. Oh, yes. Jesus loves me. Oh, yes. Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Listen carefully. He does not condemn. He does not condemn. One day, one day, a woman was caught with her pants down on the bed committing adultery. They captured her and brought her to Jesus. Took stones and they wanted to kill her. Jesus said, why do you people want to kill her now? They say, our Lord said, we must kill her. She's committing adultery. He said, okay, those of you who have not seen before, start by throwing the stone. Everybody dropped the stone and left. And the woman was waiting for the big thing, this man of God would tell her. And he looked at her. He said, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. That's how loving he is. That's how loving he is. He is not going to keep record of what you did. No, he is going to blot it out and take you as a fresh child of God and begin to love on you. I know that there are still some people trying to decide to come. Please come, even if it's one person, I'll wait. He loves you. He's not angry with you. He has nothing against you. He will help you. He will help you. He will help you. He will, don't struggle. Just get up and come. He will help you. You say, I need help. He will help you. He, nobody can help like he helps. He'll help you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. My friends, I'm already excited for you. I'm exci I like the way you're... I'm excited for you because I know what is going to happen to you. I want your hands to be free. So I want your Bibles on the floor in front of you. They'll be safe. We have security watching. Your bags, keep them in front so that your hands can be free. And I'll ask that you raise your hands up as a sign of surrender, as I pray with you. I want you to pray this prayer with me and believe it in your heart. Believe it in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Thank you this morning. I have come to you. Thank you for calling me to yourself. I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. So Jesus, come into my heart. Wash away all my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Write my name in your book of life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the grace to live for you. Thank you for accepting me as your child. I'm grateful in Jesus' name. 
Amen. I'm going to pray for you. While I'm praying for you, some of our leaders are coming to stand behind you. I know them. I trust them. You just focus on the prayer I'm about to pray for you. I need you to receive my own prayer for you right now because I'm going to pray a simple but very powerful prayer for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these brothers and sisters that you have brought to yourself this morning. Father, I pray for them a new life. A new life. Beginning from today, let the difference be clear. By your authority, transform them. By your power, change them. Cause your hand, your good hand to rest upon them. Let your eyes be over them and let your ears be towards their mouth. Father, change their destinies for good in the name of Jesus. Fill them with grace and power to live on purpose for you. But adventure, any of them is sick. I pronounce them healed now in the name of Jesus. Per adventure, there is a, 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 a conspiracy against them. Per adventure, there is a covenant speaking against them. Today, that covenant is broken. And I speak a restoration of destiny for them in the name of Jesus. Father, give them testimonies. Give them testimonies. Bless them. Tangible blessings. And take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to take you to our prayer room, number one, to get your details so that we can continue the prayers. Number two, you have extra things you want to tell us to pray about. We would like to hear about that. We'll also tell you how we can do this journey together. Look at me. Look at me. I did what you did 28 years ago. I have not regretted. You will not regret. In Jesus' name. That sister there with the Bible raised will guide you to our prayer room. The rest of us, let's appreciate God as they go to the prayer room. Glory to God. Don't stop clapping. Where we read in Luke says, there is rejoicing in heaven. If there is rejoicing in heaven, there must be rejoicing here. The Bible says the woman came back, called the friends, and said, rejoice with me. The shepherd came back, called the friends and the neighbors. He said, rejoice with me. The father says, let's kill the fatted cow. Rejoice with me. Let's stand and rejoice. 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 Glory to God Almighty. Glory to God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, go, find the lost. Tell the other one, go, find the lost. That is the highest demonstration of love to somebody who is unsaved. Rice is good. Money is good. Paying hospital bill is good. But if you don't tell them about Christ, rice won't take them anywhere. Glory to God. We have received grace to go. Start today. Start by praying by praying, and then by sharing, and then by inviting, and then by encouraging with good works, and then by following up, and they'll be planted. The man who invited me to church, every time is our anniversary time, I give him gifts. Oh yes, oh yes. Some of you should copy me. The person who invited you to church, be giving them gifts. Praise the Lord. And those of you who were invited today, thank you for accepting the invitation. Your life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to pray for you before you go. I want to pray for you before we go. The Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord is both sun and shield. No good thing will he withhold from those who are upright. I'm going to pray for good things for you. Good things for you. Listen carefully. Matthew 7, 7 to 11. Leave 7 to 10. Let me take 11. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, I like how much more, will your Father in heaven give good things, good things, to those who ask, healing is a good thing. Because there is somebody who is going to be healed right now. Healing is a good thing. 
Deliverance is a good thing. Promotion is a good thing. Somebody will be promoted this week. These are good things. These are good things. Money. Is money a good thing? Supernatural supplies. Father, in the name of Jesus, stretch forth your hands. I stand on your exalted altar and I pray for your people. I pray for your people because you said we should pray for the people. I pray for your people because you said we should ask. I ask, oh Lord, for good things for them. Father, because they are different from different places with different needs, the good things are diverse. But you know what is good for each man, for each woman. I say yes and amen. Yes and amen. We receive the healing. We receive the promotion. We receive the deliverance. We receive the supernatural supplies. We receive the supernatural supplies. We receive the supernatural supplies. We receive debt cancellation. We receive debt payments. In the name of Jesus, we receive healings in our body. Every cell is made whole. In the name of Jesus, be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Irreversibly blessed by the authority in the name of Jesus. Every conspiracy of evil against you, I cancel it. And I speak over you, you will leave. You will leave. Not just leave, you will feed on the faithfulness of God in the land of the living. You will not know shame. You will not know shame. In Jesus' name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Help me tell your neighbor, go find the lost. Now we have our invitation cards, tracks, by the, with the ushers, ask for invitation cards, ask for tracks, and make sure you carry them out this week. The medical team, I will see you right in the church office now. Praise the Lord. Your week is blessed. Pain is gone. Love Jehovah, worship him.